going on? YouTube people, thank you for stopping by today. We got a 45 minute workout today. We're gonna be hitting some dumbbells. So I used a pair of 30s. So grab something you're comfortable with. Should be a little bit lighter for the lower body, a little bit heavier for the upper body. Gonna be doing some double presses, squats, RDLs. We're hitting all the movement plans today and I am not excited about it. <laughs> Still got some time to hit that back button. If you got any questions, go ahead, jump to the back. We'll dissect all the movements. If you are ready to rock, we're gonna go ahead and jump into a five minute warm up. Appreciate y'all stopping by. So if you like the workout, go ahead, subscribe it, share it. Tell me you like it or tell me you hate it. We'll try and fix that for the next go around. Without further ado, go ahead, get it started. Let's have a good one. Hello, YouTube people. Appreciate y'all stopping by. Thanks for choosing this page as your daily installment of suffering. Appreciate that. We have a five minute warm up here for us. Just getting everything primed, getting the body ready and prepared for what's to come. 45 minute for the dumbbell workout. So that'll be a little change of pace for us. Hop in whenever you feel ready. Just some primal movements, body weight movements, just mobilizing the T-spine, getting the ankles, knee, shoulders, everything just limbered up and prepared for what's to come. And over the next couple of minutes, if you would just set an intent for what you want to get out of this workout where you want to be at the end of this workout think about what brought us here today and how we're gonna approach this workout so with all that said and done let's get a little sweat going and let's get it started
very nice. Hopefully we're warmed up, we're ready to attack our first grouping of movements. It'll be a dumbbell squat, some renegade rows, and a beetle. So it's a lower body press, an upper body pull, and then a full body dynamic core and hip flexor just to tie everything together. So go ahead, grab your dumbbells. These dumbbells will follow you for the remainder of this workout. So we're gonna get very friendly with them. We're gonna get to know them very well. So take these 30 seconds, let's get everything situated and top on into things.
three sets down, easy as that. This workout's going by quick. We're gonna move on into a new group of movements. It'll be a lower body pull, upper body press, and then a cardio core. So we got some B-stance RDL, some dumbbell push-ups, and some mountain climbers. Find the intensity that works best for us. Let's get going on this next group.
have the fun part. So we have a 15 minute AMRAP. This one is a doozy. So let's buckle up, let's grab some water, let's get ready for it here. We're gonna move into some devil presses, some squat curls, and some curtsy lunges. So a full body movement right out of the gate. Squat curls, another full body, and then those curtsy lunges, those are just gonna tax those legs because why not? We're having a good one today. So with these 15 minutes, just go at your own pace. Take whatever time you need in between, but we're gonna try moving and grooving for the entirety of these 15 minutes. So let's leave it out all on the floor. Let's have some fun with this one.
I can guarantee this is probably going to be the most productive 15 minutes of your day right here. We're approaching that halfway point. 7.30 left on the clock, so let's try and buckle down. Let's try and get it through it a couple more times. Now then, you got two minutes on the horizon, then you can get off your feet. You can rest up a little bit and finish up this workout. But right now, let's focus on the tail end of this AMRAP. You got it.
Excellent job, folks. You were not messing around today. Y'all are some champions getting through that 15 minutes. So now with these two minutes, let's collect ourselves. Let's get some water, stretch out the legs, get off the feet if you need to, rest up. We're gonna go into some supine positioning. I'm sure you're gonna like that. We're moving down to the ground. We're gonna hit the upper body a little bit. So some tricep extensions with the lower body doing a bridge and just hitting some core again with some more trap activation for those single leg raises. So a little bit less taxing, a little bit less rest time as well when we approach these next group of movements and these next couple of sets.
stretch right here. We got two sets. Hopefully you got two sets left in the tank. One movement is just gonna be the rear delt fly. So just a little bit of postural work to send down your way and some mobility. So a reverse lunge, overhead reach, more so approach this as a dynamic cool down. Let that heart rate come back down to center. You got your freedom back after this. Good job today, folks. people <laughs> holy moly 15 minutes of fun that was a good one definitely like the dumbbells that was a good change of base for us Just doing some single leg stuff arm stuff definitely got the cardio back in today that's for sure let me know what you think if, if you prefer the kettlebell or the dumbbell i think it was a nice little switch up being able to work both arms or kind of focus on one leg at the same time instead of all that unilateral stuff we've been doing prefer the dumbbells if you have like better access to dumbbells this could definitely maybe be a better shift so just let me know if you like this one better. I kind of liked it. If, if you like it, but also with kettlebells, we can totally do like one and one, bounce it back every other week. I like the idea of being able to do like renegade rows or like alternating things. So that could be good. We can like isolate in one side and then do the other side. I think it opens up a lot more avenues. If you dig the kettlebells, I can definitely get down on kettlebells as well. Whatever works. This channel, I'm trying to cater to you guys. So whichever one y'all are getting down with more, you let me know. Kind of go from there. But I appreciate you all stopping by. And if you made it through the end, good job to you. <laughs> that was definitely a tough one. Be feeling that one tomorrow. Like it, subscribe it. If you got a friend that you're trying to punish, send them the link for this one or her. And uh, yeah, we'll keep it going. We'll catch up with y'all next week. Dumbbell, squat curl, fundamental movement, big compound movement. We're just gonna be up in a front rack position. Forearms, as vertical as we can. If we got tight lats, we might be here at an angle right here. And now we're gonna be wrestling with the dumbbells the whole time to try and keep them upright. So really try and push those elbows forward. Try and have our forearms as vertical as we can. Let gravity just kind of compact us so we're nice and tight. We don't want to rock over the dumbbells either. So chest back, create some space between the shoulders and the ears. Pull those shoulder blades back, it's a nice proud chest. As we go down, we want the chest and we want the hips descending at the same time. 
um, and ascending at the same time. So everything's just moving in unison. We're not doing a Kang squat, we're not doing a deadlift, we're not doing a hip hinge. So we're doing a primarily knee-driven movement. So as we go down, if we have like a piece of construction paper in between our feet, have the weight in the, the blades of our feet. So we're gonna try and rip that paper apart. It's really gonna emphasize our knee staying in the right place. So the knees point out. We don't want the knees collapsing. We don't want the chest falling down. And then as we drive upwards, lead with the chest, the rest of the body will follow. So everything's going up at the same time. Squeeze the glutes at the top. Give it about three seconds on the way down, one second on the way up. Weight in the blades of your feet, weight in the heels, and everything moving in unison. If we are looking to plank, get the core, get some rowing strength, unilateral anti-rotation work, this is definitely going to check those boxes. As we would set up in a high plank, hands are going to be on the dumbbells. A nice neutral position there for the wrists, alleviate any type of pressure there. Nice wide stance, that's going to make it easier. So when we lift up one arm, we're going to be in a tripod, a nice strong foundation, and we'll just alternate in rows. So what we're looking for here, if it's heavier, we may roll forward and get all out of whack. So we don't want that. Let's say it's falling on our right side, so we're going to want to drive our right foot in the ground as hard as we can so that's gonna crank our hips back over into a nice level position so we're gonna pull it up try and put that dumbbell into your pocket if we raise it too high that's gonna just be a funky angle for the wrist and put a lot of pressure on the anterior portion of the shoulder back high and tight create some space from the shoulder all the way up to the ear so pack that shoulder blade down up into our pocket squeezing that leg think nice in alignment so we're pulling place it back down don't let gravity yank you back to the earth so everything nice slow controlled if you want more of a challenge you can just play with that foot stance the wider you go the easier is going to be more narrow the more challenging it's going to be we're just alternating between the two pick a weight that's almost half that you can do for a regular bent over row because of the level of instability and everything else that has to be working in order for you to create that force be mindful of the shoulder be mindful of the hips just take it nice and slow try and maintain a good plank throughout the entirety of this movement looking at a beetle right here it's a great exercise if you're auditioning for the new james bond movie if you are practicing to smoke your cousins in the twister game for the holidays but also really good for scapular health, single arm stability, wrist health, hip flexor strength, obliques, new motor pathways uh, moving your body around that we get away from as we age. So this one in particular is really good for proprioception, rotating about with your scapula, again really good fluid movement around your rib cage. like I was saying before, wrist stability, wrist strength there as we're not so often in that fully flexed position for a wrist, so fall prevention, everything like that. Again, proprioception as we rotate, we're engaging through our hip flexors engaging through our obliques when we're rotating. First time you're doing it, if this is a new movement for you, you're gonna feel like a baby lamb or something. You're moving pretty funky, and I'm sure you haven't done this in years, if ever. So the first time you're going about this, you're gonna feel a little bit clunky, and then it's more like a brain exercise than it is a body exercise at that moment. And then as you get more fluid with it, it'll be like metabolic conditioning and core training and cardio and everything. So it's a great progression, and you can add so many other movements from this initial beetle exercise. At first, take it slow, really focus on the steps, make it as fluid as you can, uh, yeah, just have some fun with it. Getting some glute work, getting some proprioception going on. This will be a B stance RDL. We're going to be alternating. So if you're not familiar with a B stance, we're going to be in the same positioning as we would like a regular squat as far as feet width. If we're going to be focusing on the left leg, let's move that right leg back. So if we can't do a single leg RDL, can't do a pistol squat, or we're just looking to load up a little bit more, B stance would be great for that because it does allow us to have more balance, more stability, but definitely target one leg over the other. So if we are moving back in that B stance, right leg back, make sure that back toe is in line with the front heel. So we're almost making a box, getting the shoulders down, we're not shrugging up. As we descend into the, the RDL portion, let's have the hips go back. So a little bit in the knees, big in the hips. We're trying to shut a car door or something, and we got our hands full of groceries. Our butt is just going to go back and push it, right? So that's kind of the idea that we're going full chest up, butt back. As we descend into it, we're going to feel a lot of pressure in that front leg. So all the load should be primarily into that front leg. We might feel a little bit back leg just as far as stability. We're really targeting that front leg, driving through that heel. So dig that front heel into the ground and that's gonna shoot our hips forward, squeeze the glutes, bring them forward, chest rises up, just alternate in between the two. When you get to that start position, change up the feet, we're now gonna be targeting the other side, to the right leg. And as we descend, I already mentioned this, but dumbbells, obviously, they're gonna wanna go for a ride as we're descending into that deadlift. So we're not protracting the shoulders, we're not letting the weight really drag us forward. Full time, trying to pin them down, engage the lats, engage the rhomboids, the lower traps, and the core. Just make sure everything's nice and tight as we descend, and then squeezing the glutes, popping back up.
This one is going to be a variation of a regular push-up, throwing in some dumbbells. What this is going to do is just allow us to get up a little bit higher, greater range of motion. That's going to activate more of the muscle fibers, create a little bit more strength gains, a little bit more hypertrophy. We're not changing anything as far as the push-up goes. We're trying to have a moving plank, so straight line from the heel all the way up to the head. Grabbing the dumbbells, this could even be nicer for your wrists as opposed to being completely extended like that. We're going to be in that neutral grip. If you have arthritis, this could definitely be a good variation for you if you're not feeling it with the, the other wrist position for a regular push-up. Going down, trying to have the, the shoulders and the waist go down at the same time so we're not doing like a weird cobra pose or the butt's not going up ahead of time when we're doing the press. So everything nice and straight, engaging the core, and squeezing the glutes as we go down. One thing to look out for, being that we are going to have a greater range of motion while we're going down, try not to have our shoulders rock forward anteriorly. So we don't want to go down and then some of this action starts happening. So if that is happening, if we lack the mobility to get that good depth, get to that position where the shoulders are beginning to rock forward and then we're going to push back upwards. At that top position, we don't want the scapula retracting, so we want everything nice and pressed forward, nice and engaged, straight line the whole time, big press, exhale on the way up, inhale on the way down. This one is a spicy one, full body, getting some overhead extension, so we're almost like a clean, definitely getting the cardio because we are throwing in a burpee component, the dumbbells right ahead of us, having maybe like three, four inches ahead of us, nice wide stance because we want a little bit of room for those dumbbells to go in between, hands down to the dumbbells, kick the legs out as we were to do a burpee. If you are looking to be a little bit more adventurous for the day, you can throw a push up at that bottom position. If not, what I'm doing, just feet going out, feet coming back in, we're grabbing those dumbbells, get some momentum, so hinge pattern, soft bend in the knees, swing them back when they get to that farthest back point so almost slapping you in the backside squeezing the glutes raising the chest driving everything up overhead blowing it straight up hold it at that top position for a second we don't want to just completely throw it up there lose control and now our shoulders are flying back they're all out of whack so nice and controlled for the entire movement getting it up there and then on the way down we can either rack it on our shoulders and then place it on the ground ahead of us for that next rep or if we are comfortable in this movement you can right from that top position go ahead swing them back down hinge pattern again so we're eccentrically catching it place it down, get those legs out again for that second burpee, going into another move. So this is definitely going to get the heart rate up as far as proprioception. A lot of limbs are moving, so you're going to want to know where your body is in space. Good for the glutes, good for the core. Again, I don't know if I said cardio already, <laughs> but overhead stability, all that fun stuff. So great movement right here. We got the squat down pat. Now we want to get a little bit more upper body, so incorporate this into a full body movement. Now doing a squat curl. Same mechanics as you would a squat, shoulder width apart, knees going out, chest and the hips moving in unison, right? So we got that. We're now throwing in a curl. So if you've ever been on a water slide or at the playground when you were younger, you have the slide and the pole right above it. And if you want a little bit more speed, you kind of yank yourself and pull yourself underneath it. That's kind of the idea that we're going to follow with. As we squat, use that momentum. So as we go down, lower body's going down, upper body's pulling, right? So we're pulling ourselves under that weight in the biceps. Something to be mindful of being that there is going to be a lot of momentum and a lot of moving parts right here. Just be mindful of the weight. As we're going down, we don't want to yank it up and really have that weight just flying up. And now we're catching it in that bottom position and we got the momentum of the weight kind of pulling us back. So just be mindful of that. Catch it in that top position while we're in that squat. And as we stand up, we're going to lower it down. So it's almost like a seesaw action. When one goes up, the other goes down, vice versa. And when we do catch in that bottom position, we're going to try and have our elbows and everything rock forward as much as we can. So we want our forearms vertical in that bottom position to catch those dumbbells nice and properly. And as we go down, we can go ahead and let it down. Great full body movement. Definitely gets the heart rate up. I wouldn't go too, too heavy with the dumbbells. We're not looking to really tax the biceps that much. This is more a higher intensity type of movement so go a little bit moderate go for reps go for time yeah squat curl whole time trying to make sure everything's nice and engaged we're not going loosey-goosey with our core as we go down there so just be mindful of everything as we go down and up hitting some legs hitting some adductors and funky movements so proprioception and core with the load being up top so it's going to be alternating front rack curtsy with a kettlebell to get the front rack position right here with the dumbbells it's going to be a little bit differently we're not resting it on the shoulders per se but we do want it as close to the body and the forearms are vertical so i see a lot of people especially if they get fatigued or they're not too comfortable getting into a front rack position or maybe they have tight lats they have a difficult time driving the elbows up but what that's going to do as opposed to fighting it the whole time if we have our arms kind of out on this angle. The weight is just gonna be pulling us down the whole time, but if we have our elbows flared forward, these are vertical, the weight is just going straight down. So it's nice and compact and we're able to handle it a little bit better. That'll be the front rack position and we're just gonna be alternating sides as far as the curtsy goes. Curtsy lunge, we are wrapping around one leg. So we're moving laterally. We almost want the, the leg that's in back, that knee, to be in line with that front heel. Common mistake, they go super wide and now you have the front leg veering out to the side we're doing like a weird split that leg is way off to the side so we don't want to 
do that, do something right in the middle. We don't want to be too narrow either. We want a little bit of space if we are not stepping too far laterally and we're narrow. We're just going to be super congested and then we're going to get tangled up and we're not really going to be optimizing the muscles that should be working in this movement. Find a space that works for you, stepping out to the side. Going to feel it a lot in the abductors. So the glute med, hitting that glute, hitting that front quad when we stand up and then the whole time being that it's in the front right position. We're going to feel that urge to be rocking forward. So fight that urge. That'll be our rectors. That'll be our core. We're trying to have our spine as vertical as we can. Off to one side, collect ourselves in the center, alternating right there and the whole time trying to keep that chest up, squeezing through that front glute, standing up tall. I'm sure we have done tricep extensions. I'm sure we have done skull crushers at some point in time. If you haven't, this will be a good move for you if we are not trying to waste any time. So as opposed to just focusing on the elbows moving and hitting one muscle group, we might as well just get the whole body involved, right? So we're going to glute bridge up. Be about shoulder width apart. Your legs down below and we're going to bridge up. So a lot of pressure in the heels. Hips are high. Squeezing the glutes. So now we have that strong base. That's also going to elevate our chest a little bit and create a little bit more of a range of motion when you go up overhead with the dumbbells. We're not moving the shoulders back, so we're not rotating backwards and putting the shoulders in kind of a compromised position with the weight. Just the elbows are moving, so you can almost bring those dumbbells. You wanted to put your thumbs on your temples. That's that's the motion that we're going for. So hips are high, everything in alignment, just the elbows are moving. So we're down and extending upwards to get a good squeeze of those triceps, especially the long head. You can flare out your pinky at that top position, so you are going to feel those triceps engage and squeeze just a little bit more with that rotation. As you go down, nice slow controlled. We're not bonking ourselves with the dumbbells. We're not dropping them on our head. Oh, nice slow controlled. Give it about two seconds on the way down. One second on the way up. Nice big explosion. Big squeeze at the top. Trying to keep the hips up the whole time. If we're not comfortable doing the bridge, we can totally just be in that supine position. Legs bent and just moving the elbows. Still hitting the triceps. But if you are looking to have the whole body, make the most out of your time. You can throw a bridge in there. So we're getting the glutes, getting the core, and getting the triceps at the same time. So great full body movement while we're laying on the ground looking at a fun core movement kind of full body movement too so i'm sure you've seen the instagram videos where the person's like pushing into a dumbbell and kicking through and, and then they go up into a handstand or something crazy like that i can't do that so we're going to modify it and it's going to be a modified l-sit single leg hip raise we're going to be hitting the same muscle groups but not quite as intense right there dumbbells are going to be right off to the side so just a little bit wider than shoulder width just enough for you to kind of weasel your way in there press down into the dumbbell so we have some elevation hips are going to be up off the pad we're just alternating driving one leg up what we're looking for here here. We don't want to be too, too far away from the dumbbell, so we're reaching behind us, and now our shoulders are rolled forward, and we're leaning back, so try to be as vertical as we can, so stack right over those dumbbells. As we press down into it, we're obviously going to feel our shoulders raise up a little bit, so if we pack our shoulders down, pressing down, that's going to engage your lower traps. That is what depresses the scapula, so if we're up here, that's what we don't want, so we really try and press down, so we're getting the triceps, we're getting the lower traps, often neglected, that's going to be a lot as far as like postural work, and that attaches down and make sure the hips are nice in alignment. So definitely a good exercise to do. Even if we're not doing the, the leg raises, we can even just do that and that'll hit the lower traps. With this one, we're just alternating, getting the legs up so it's gonna hit your lower core as well as your hip flexors. So another muscle group that is not really paid nearly enough attention to is the hip flexors. So we're getting those involved, we're getting the lower traps, we're getting the triceps, getting the core. If you're feeling ambitious, you can lift up both legs and let them hang out there for time. You can just alternate between the two. You'll feel a burn, do it for time, do it for reps. But the whole time, that's what we're looking for. We're not looking to recline, we're not having the dumbbells too far behind us, shoulders pinned down and just moving one at a time, nice, slow and controlled. We're not letting our legs just plop back down after we raise it up. So as controlled as we are on the way up, as controlled as we are on the way down. So it's kind of a tongue twister, but you get the point. Just a little tap there with the heel and the next one goes up. Rear delt fly, I'm sure we have done this before. If you haven't, that's why you're here. Shoulder width apart. We're gonna make a deadlift position. So shoulder width, soft bend in the knees, squeezing the glutes, shoulders pinned down, good space between the ears and the shoulders. Our dumbbells are gonna be right ahead of us. So as we fly upwards, you're almost picturing a reverse bear hug. So nice big hug, retracting the scapula. We wanna be pulling through the elbows. We don't want the wrists flying up and making almost a W. We don't want that whole time. Elbows, a little bit soft bend. We're not trying to pull upwards. So they're a little long, a little bit of a bend, big bear hug. There is a pencil between your shoulder blades. Just try and pinch it back there. So retract those, you feel your rhomboids, your rear delts, and then you're also going to get some glute work and hamstring work because you are in the hinge position. Just the flags of the, of the wrist going backwards, that's going to anterior rotate your shoulder, put a lot of pressure right there. We don't want that. Pull through the elbows, squeeze the glutes, 
and squeeze those shoulder blades together. Rear fly. This is a good movement here if you are looking to cool down a little bit but still trying to be mobile. You can incorporate this at the end of your workouts or even just as a warm up in between sets or something if we're trying to stay active, keep the heart rate elevated, stay limber if we're maybe doing squat patterns or we're gonna move back into a reverse lunge. We're looking for 90-90. What I mean by that, when we step backwards, we want the front knee at a 90 degree angle. The back knee, that's gonna be a 90 degree angle as well from the shins up to the hips. And then we want a straight line for our torso. So if you can picture a pole going in our head, down our spine, down our backside, down that thigh of the back leg, and then to the ground. That's the idea that we're looking for. A couple flags. If you are leaning forward, that could mean your rear leg is a little bit too narrow. Take some depth on that. If we are too wide, wavering a little bit, when you do go back, just check your boxes as far as 90-90. Then when we are in that back position, this is going to test the integrity and the stability of that lunge pattern. So if we're, if we're back, let's have a right leg back. It'll be our right arm. Bend laterally. So it'll just be a big stretch of your oblique big stretch of your lats and then just taxing a little bit as far as stability of your glutes and the hamstrings and everything in that lunge position. Like I said you're not trying to tax it or anything if you are trying to up the intensity maybe you can grab some fives but not a movement that you're gonna want to load up at all more so stretch stability could feel a good stretch in your hip flexor as well of that back leg deep exhale in through the nose out through the mouth as you push that's kind of the idea as opposed to reaching try and push that wall away so really open up that, that side of your leg alternating between the two of them.